In programming, variables are one of the most important aspects of learning to code. If you can understand this fundamental skill of programming, you are well on your way to becoming an expert programmer. Deriving from the French Latin word vary, which means to change, variable is a mathematical term you may have seen before in other subjects or fields such as science. It is a word to describe a quantity that can vary in value. Stop it. Get some help. Anyway, many videos will use a metaphor of variables are like boxes that can be opened up to store different values. While well, that's certainly a fine way to get an idea of what variables do, it's far too abstract for me. So let's see what variables actually are using the greatest game in the world. Of course that would be Dark Souls. Take a look at this still here. We can see many elements of this game that could change value as time goes on. Your character's health bar for example, your items, enemy health and enemy locations. All of this data needs to be stored somewhere, but also be stored in an easily accessible location. That would be the computer's memory, or RAM. Remember that even on a games console it is still using the same architecture as any other computer. It will have a CPU, a hard drive, RAM, so put simply, a console is still a computer. All of this data will be stored on the computer's memory and needs to be accessed and updated as and when the program needs. If your health suddenly gets lower, that value will be need to be updated in memory. Incidentally, one of the ways you can cheat in video games is by using programs that can access memory directly and modifying these values. Of course, if you do this in an online setting, you will most likely get banned for such unsporting behaviour. Even in simple programs like a calculator, you will still need to store variables and update values. In the program itself, each variable will need to be given a name to describe the contents of the variable. For example, your health bar may be named Player Health. There may be an item slot 1 variable containing the name or an item code. Another important part of learning variables is that each variable is assigned a type. This is because each variable in memory is actually stored as binary code. Binary can be interpreted in many different ways. For example, the binary code for B, shown on the screen, can also be the number 66. In fixed point binary, it could be the number 4.125. So it is important to mark the value so that the computers know what rule we are using to interpret the value. Well, there are many more variable types than this. The important five to start off with are number one, the string. This can be used to store textual values. Number two, the integer. This is used to store whole numbers. Number three, the decimal. In C sharp, this is either a real or a double. This is used to store values that have a decimal place. Number four, the char. This is used to store a single character. And number five, the boolean. Often forgotten by beginner programmers, this is used to store true or false values. This variable type is definitely worth remembering because we will be using it a lot in later challenges. Now let's show you how to code this in C sharp. I suggest if possible you pause the video at certain sections and try coding this up yourself so you can experiment and change what I code. So in C sharp you can create a variable in the following way. First you write up the variable type, and then the name of the variable. The name is referred to as the identifier, because it identifies what variable you're referring to. You may call this identifier whatever you want, however it's always important to give your identifiers meaningful names so that you know the purpose of the variable. We call this declaring a variable. It is important to note that once you have declared a variable, you don't need to declare it again. Writing the variable type followed by the name is declaring the variable. So you'll see, if I try to declare the same variable again, it will throw up an error. If I want to put a value into the variable, I'll need to use an equal sign, like this. Notice the value I'm assigning to the variable is on the right, and the variable identifier is on the left. Always remember this order, value on the right, identifier on the left. Notice that the string variable is in quotation marks, while the integer is not. In c -sharp, any string value is put into quotation marks, char values are put into single quotation marks, and integers are not. While this may be hard to remember, you'll get used to it the more you practice. Another thing you can do if you want to save in coding space is to declare and assign the variable on the same line. Now let's try outputting this variable. A simple console.write line will do the trick. As you can see, the variable gets outputted to the console. Next, we'll attach a message to the variable using a plus symbol. A second way of doing this is also shown, but I will be using the first method. Notice that the message I wrote is in quotation marks, but the plus and the variable identifier is not. That means that part of this message is actually a string, but it has not been placed into a variable. Do not get confused though. 
Even though this variable right here is a string, because it is the variable identifier, we don't put it in quotation marks. Again, this is one of those things that you will get used to over time. Finally, let's learn how to use the readLine function to input custom user values into these variables. You may not want to give a variable a set value as the program begins. Instead, you may want the user to assign values themselves. You can use the console.readLine to do this. When you run the program, the console will pause and wait for the user to type in a value. When the user presses the return key, whatever value the user has input will be placed into the variable. For a string, it is as simple as this. However, for other variables such as integers or reals, you will need to convert the variable to the correct variable type. That is because the console.readLine command will get a string as its input. However, there is a special line of code we can use to convert it to the correct variable type. You simply wrap the console.readLine command in brackets and then use the following code int.pass for integers, double.pass for decimals, and char.pass for characters. This may seem like a lot to remember, but Visual Studio will remind you if you are not passing correctly with the following error. Once again, practice will make this second nature to you. One final thing before we go is the idea of sequencing. In a sequential programming language like C Sharp, one line is processed at a time, from top to bottom. If an output happens before this assignment change, for example, it will output the original value, not the updated value. Now is the time to practice these tasks for yourself. Here are a set of random challenges you can try to practice variables. If you would like to see step-by-step -step answers to these challenges, there will be a follow-on video which I will pin in the comments. If you learned something new from this video or enjoyed it otherwise, please give this video a like and tap that subscribe button for more coding videos.